Today on what it's like, old school versus new school. Over here on this corner, 1952 Chevy, one ton truck. Over here, 2020 Chevy, one ton truck. Which one is the truck for you? Find out today on what it's like. But before getting into all of it, a bit of a side note, we will be doing three types of comparison videos on this channel because this is sort of an outside the box type of channel. We already do this versus that where we compare similar cars to one another. Old versus new or original versus retro. And the last category would be non-comparable comparisons. This fits in both the last two categories. Anyway, I'm Jay, welcome to What It's Like. This channel, we feature the classics, vintage, some exotics, lots of orphan cars, and cars that are off the beaten path. We dive in deep, give perceptions, as well as period correct ads and specs, and talk about things that people just simply don't talk about on other channels. If that sounds of interest to you, subscribe and hit the bell icon next to it to never miss a video. So if you're still watching, you're probably sitting there wondering why? Compare these two trucks. They are 70 years apart. The 52 Chevy is my truck, and I paid a lot less for it than my father-in-law's GMC Denali. I will just let you in. I'm not going to tell you how much I paid for this truck, but I'm just going to tell you I paid less than one-tenth of what my father-in-law did. So this episode, do you need a $100,000 truck, or could a truck that costs less than one-tenth the price suffice. Let's talk specs right out of the gate. The specs are going to be a truck-by-truck -truck basis, meaning we're not going to go through all of the engines on offer for both of these trucks, just what's inside the trucks featured. Starting with the 52 Chevy 1-ton, aka Advanced Design 3800 Series. 137 inches is the wheelbase, 224 inches long, weighs 4,200 pounds, which is a roughly the same weight as a new Kia Sorento. Payload is 4,100 pounds. Price, base price in 1952 for a one-ton steak bed was $1,692, which was equivalent to you spending $18,950.91 in the year 2022. Oh man, have things changed. So moving on to the 2020 Chevy Denali Dually. It rides a wheelbase of 172 inches. It is 266 inches long, 80.67 inches tall, 81.9 inches wide. That's not counting the mirrors. The curb weight is 7,064 pounds. Maximum payload is 4,398 pounds. Maximum towing is 20,000 pounds. And the price was 65500 is what it started at. And that is equivalent because we've had a massive inflation spike. That's equivalent to $74,542.70 in the year 2022. Now let's put these specs side by side to one another and really compare the two. So let's start with the price tag. $18,950.91 for the 52 Chevy was the equivalent price of what it should cost now in 2022, but I can't think of a single truck. Not even the Ford Maverick is that cheap. Anyway, the difference is $55,591.79. Just think about that for a second. That's really painful. That's almost as much as I owe on my house. That's crazy. Anyway, if you look at these specs side by side, aside from the price tag, the new model is bigger in every way than the original. It weighs almost twice as much. It also has double the seating capacity. It's 22 inches longer than the 52 Chevy, and it has a 35 inch longer wheelbase. Payload is very interesting because it's 4,100 pounds in 1952 up to 4,398 pounds in 2020. That's a difference of 298 pounds. So I thought the 52 was going to beat the new one on that category of uh, payload, but that's good that these trucks are almost 70 years apart. And one could only hope that things would improve during that time. Moving on to engines, starting with the 1952. So there's a little bit of a caveat here. The 52 is not stock. I put a different engine in it. It has a 1986 Chevy 350 V8, 5.7 liters. It makes a whopping 160 horsepower, 230 foot-pounds of torque. 
I'm able to get 10 miles per gallon city, 16 miles per gallon on the highway for a dually truck. That's really not that bad. Anyway, moving on to Denali Duramax diesel. It has a 6.6 .6 liter V8 turbo diesel. It makes 445 horsepower, 910 pound feet of torque, and the compression is 16 to 1. So let's start with the front end styling. I absolutely love the front end styling of this 52 Chevy one ton truck. It has just this nice farm charm about it. And it's super basic, it's super simple. Like the lights and the turn signals and or parking lights are right here. Actually, these are just for parking lights. Up here is where the turn signal indicators are. If like on the smaller trucks, like the half ton and the three quarter ton, if these are the turn signals, up here on the one tons, that's where the turn signal indicators are. All right, coming up to the front end design of the GMC Denali, just notice how many lights there are. There's so many different, and I, I get it. There's only like one or two bulbs in there and these are all just reflectors, but just check it out. Look at all of the different lights. It's got fog lights. It's got tow hooks in the front for you to hook onto things and pull, pull stuff out with. It's got a camera in the front right there. It's just really, really massive front end when compared to the old school Chevy, the 52 one ton Chevy. It just, it looks like a giant brick in my opinion. There's curves, like, look at the 52 Chevy in comparison to the new 2020 Denali. The Chevy's got curves everywhere. And it's got bars in the front too. But not quite to this extreme. Let's talk about build quality for a second. I'm going to come over here and I'm going to push on this as hard as I can. I am really pushing on that and it is not moving or bending or anything. I'm going to move up here. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm shaking the truck, but it's not moving or bending. It does move and bend a little bit in the door because it's, it's a big piece of steel. Here, it doesn't move. I'm going to come over here. I'm going to do the same thing to this. I'm not even pushing on it that hard. And, and that's always been my biggest gripe. That's always been my biggest gripe with new cars is they're just not, and I, and, and I get it. People are like, oh man, you need the crumple zones. It needs to bend and flex so that whenever you, if it hits something, it doesn't kill you. But if you're washing a car that's always moving, it's so hard to wash. It's so much easier to wash something that has a smooth, sturdy surface than it is if it's constantly moving all the time but maybe that's just my opinion over on the 52 here's what your mirror situation looks like it's only got one mirror setting it's not like bifocals you know you that's what you see what you see this truck's got vent windows getting inside there's no fancy door handles or anything like that you just push the button to get inside so just check out this door panel. There's not a whole lot going on. This is this is cardboard. This is where the door card term came from because a lot of the older cars are simply cardboard pieces, just like this. That's cardboard. Down here, that's a steel insert. It's just a steel door. As you can see, it's starting to rust a little bit that I have to take care of that. Just wanna show you how this door is. It's all framed out vent window here push it like this to operate it but my vent window broke the hinge up top broke i'm not entirely sure who i can contact to fix that the little it needs like welded but yeah it broke this is the door handle to get out this is the window crank for the big window and that's how it operates but just look up here and then it curves back here because it has to fit in this spot up here that's curved. All right, before getting inside, I just want to talk about a few things. So right here, if you push this button in, that locks the doors. You also have that on this side over here as well. 
if the door is locked and you have your key in your pocket, push this to unlock the door as well. Look at these gigantic mirrors, absolutely huge. And there's lights on them so that you can see at night and they fold in as well. So the top mirror, they're almost like bifocal glasses. Getting inside, notice the keyhole is separate from the door handle. Like we got in a Dodge Challenger the other day and when you lifted the door handle to get in and out, it was cut inside the door handle. But this one is actually fixed on the door itself. Getting inside. So coming over here to the door panel switches, this is for the right mirror, left mirror. This is the D-pad to control the mirror. This one puts, um, this one locks the windows. This one extends the mirrors. So that's a cool feature if you have a trailer. This one next to it folds the mirrors in if you're parking somewhere in a tight corner or tight spot or whatever and you didn't want the mirrors to get hit. And this one, if you hit it again, puts the mirrors back out to where they were. These control the windows and that's how they operate. One touch automatic for both driver and passenger in the front the rear windows go all the way down but they're not automatic coming down inside the pedal box down here now, now if you notice there's four pedals in my pedal box and you might be wondering well what are all the pedals for well this one over here is the emergency brake which is really nice to have it right here it's also even better that the emergency brake release is right here so if you're going up a big hill with a really big load you can cheat and instead of like, you know, holding it there on a hill, you could push this in and hold yourself on the hill with the emergency brake. And when you're ready to go, just simply push, pull this out and away you're gone. High beam switch. This is the clutch pedal. The spring, the return spring is bad. So that's why it sinks down a little bit. It's not riding on the throw out bearing. So it's, it's fine to drive it, but it's something that I need to fix. Also, all the rubbers are gone. It generally they they wear out. They they sh stretch and they they fall off, and that's why this is what the pedal looks like underneath the rubber. Brake pedals here, gas pedals there, and this used to be the starter button, but it got moved up here to the ignition. All right, getting inside the Denali and shutting the door. That's what it sounds like, and then you're greeted with. Denali on the big on the screen behind where the gauges are and you're greeted with GM over there on the infotainment screen That's what over the hood looks like it's really long and rectangular This truck is very intimidating to drive because it's it's almost like driving a city block up above Sun visors as well as courtesy mirrors with lights over here on the passenger side, same thing. Courtesy mirrors with lights. Nice rear view mirror that acts as a rear view camera when you're backing up as well. The daytime nighttime switch, it turns into a rear view camera. So that's pretty cool. I was gonna show you what these cameras look like, but you can't really see it on the GoPro. It's too uh, washed out. But this one looks, up, looks pretty good. So you just flip it the whole mirror turns into a camera, which is super nice. And it's also got the dimming feature. Here's what first person looks like. And I apologize for the steering wheel. I don't have access to the keys at the moment and I'm running out of daylight. So it's, it is what it is. Down here, there's tons of room underneath the steering wheel. This steering wheel moves, it telescopes and tilts. I'm not gonna mess with it because that's one of my biggest pet peeves is to mess with the seat or the steering wheel. So I'm not gonna mess with it. You'll just have to take my word for it. This is what I look like in the driver's seat. Lots of headroom in this vehicle. This, this truck is very wide and long. Like just check out how much space there is to the other side. I can't reach the other side. I'm leaning all the way over and I still can't reach the other side. This truck has a lot more creature comforts than the 52, that's for sure. I mean, look at all the different power ports you have. 
to plug in different accessories. It even has a wall outlet to plug in wall stuff, as well as a cigarette outlet or AC adapter port, USB, USB-C, all kinds of button switches and knobs. We're not gonna get into all of them. Down here, wireless charger for your phone, cup holders. There's a place to even put sanitizer. Like, look at that. Well thought of. There is another charging point. This is a wireless charger here. Inside the 52 Chevy truck. You simply just climb up inside of it. So that's what it sounds like with the door shut. Here is what over the hood looks like. Here's what first person slash over the hood looks like. As you can see, one of the things that you see right away is the sun visor. The sun visor is a positive and a negative. When you have the sun visor, it's super cool because like if it's raining, it deflects the rain a little bit. Also, if some idiot is driving with the high beams on, all you have to do is move your line of vision up to here and you high beams aren't really a problem. There are a couple issues worth mentioning. There are some issues worth mentioning though. If you get underneath a traffic light, like right underneath it, you will not see the traffic light. If it's nighttime, you can see the reflection of the traffic light in the paint. So th there's that. I always try to get behind somebody. When they move, I'll move. Um, but yeah, the sun visor is great for, for that. Here's what I look like in the 52 Chevy one ton truck. There is a ton of headroom in this truck. More headroom in this than the newer truck. And that's hard to believe because there is a ton of headroom in the new truck. But you could literally wear Abe Lincoln's style top hat and drive this and not have an issue whatsoever. Is, is there, if you've noticed, there's only one sun visor in here. And it's kind of stiff because I never really use it because I don't really need to because I got the external sun visor. But it's there if the, it's beaming over here, I can move it over there. Rear view mirrors here. You might be wondering what is that scoop? What, what does that do? Well, it's down here. Notice it's gone. I'm gonna put it back up. That is the best thing that they don't put in cars anymore. That is the Cal air conditioning. I call it air conditioning, but it's, it's essentially just takes the cold air from outside and it blows it down at your feet. I am not exaggerating. You could drive this truck 80 degrees outside with all of the windows up with just that open and it will circulate in here beautifully. It almost feels like air conditioning is on, but it's just blowing down at your feet. I never driven a car with it, but in here, that's all you need. If you had the vent windows open and that, it would be perfect. All of the windows open, it's amazing in the summertime. You don't ever get hot in this thing. You don't really need AC. I have no idea why they stopped doing that. That's the best feature they don't put on cars anymore. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here's my hand for reference. Here is our glove box that we're going to use. We're gonna use the bottom one because it looks bigger than the one on the top. And you just stick it in there like that. And it, it does house it. I actually think there's maybe more glove box space in this truck than there is in mine. And I only say maybe because my glove box is absolutely huge. On to the glove box test. Here's our test subject. Here is my hand for reference. Here is our glove box. This glove box is absolutely massive. So I just wanna show you what's inside the glove box now. This is a flash for the camera. Here's a GoPro mount. I have fit all of this stuff, plus my iPad, plus my GoPro, plus whatever else that I've wanted to fit in here. And it shuts. And with this key, it's lockable so that, you know, nobody's going to know that all that stuff is in that glove box because the glove box looks really small. And, and that's why I show this because the car, the truck might be hard to lock, 
But the glove box isn't. And nobody's going to ever suspect you have an iPad or a camera and said glove box. Over here is the ashtray. And it, it's removable. This one's got an aftermarket radio here. Generally, there would be like a dead plate. This was radio. Windshield wipers are up here. It's a really weird position for the wipers. And this one's got one windshield wiper right now. The other one, I don't know, it fell apart or something like that. Just some basic, here's the lights. This is choke. This is for throttle. If you had this hooked up, I don't. But if you had it hooked up, you could almost use it as a primitive cruise control. But more or less, it was for if you had a PTO. It switches down here. We already talked about the brake release. This is for the defrost. So if you have it pulled out, that is for defrost. If you have it pushed in, that sends the heat to the floor. This doesn't have any panel heat, as in it doesn't come, if you have the heater on, it does not come through the panel. There is nowhere for the heat to come through the panel. It either goes to the defrost, which comes out these little vents here, or it goes down at your feet. The one next to it, this is for the fan. This controls the fan speed or the blower motor. Over here, none of that will work if you don't turn on the heater, of course. This is the heater. You turn on the heater by turning this. You turn it to the to the right for warmer and you turn it to the left for colder. And the actual heater motor is down here. So there's there's a lot of parts to this process. It's it's funny. This this is an aftermarket switch for the fan. This used to have an electric fan. So just check out there's running boards down here to get into and the running boards come all the way back for the second passenger for the second row seat of passengers. Plus, there's a nice step to get into the bed here. Look at how massive this fuel door is. And it's got a place to put diesel as well as death. Because you have to put an additive in if you have a diesel vehicle over a certain year. And just check out how this flares out because it's also a dually. You can see GM inside the reflector. Just so you never forget that this is a GM product. Coming back here, there is another step to get into the bed. And just check out the bed. Like I said, we use this today. My, this is my father-in-law's truck and we he's up here visiting us foot bed this bed is over here same thing got a nice step to get up in the bed so it's, it's symmetrical coming over here this truck does not have a mega cab or a quad cab or I'm not sure what GM's uh, definition of crew cab is but I do have running boards here the running boards kind of stop here right as the cab corners are. People complain all the time about a door gap. You want to see a door gap? This is a door gap. It gets better. In the winter time, there barely is even a gap at all. But the doors need re realigned, essentially. But a cool feature my, this truck has that the new trucks don't are these windows here. And I just want to show you this. So why they stopped doing this is beyond me. But if you got to an intersection, you could just look out this window and see. Just see how convenient that would be. Coming around to the bed back here, there are no wheel arches back here because it's a, it's a flat bed. These wheels are two sizes bigger than the wheels on the newer truck. The, on the new truck, it's got 17s. These are 19.5s. This bed is wider than the new bed. It's a steak bed. Yes, you could get a one ton steak bed new truck, but we're just, we're just comparing what's here. Oh yeah, and there is,
So this truck comes with a step side as well. Only this step is totally adjustable and you can move it wherever you'd like to put the step. So if you want the step to be there, you can put it there. If you want the step to be back here, you could put it back here because it hooks onto the rail of the bed and it's fully adjustable. If you want to move it to the other side, you could even do that as well. Moving to the under the hood section, just pull this, even though there's a car on there. All right, after messing around for a little bit, I finally found it, if I can find it again. Um, it's in the middle. It's sort of right here where the M is. There is a lever and you're gonna pull it, move it to the right. And that releases the hood. And here's what the engine looks like. This one is a Duramax diesel. All kinds of emission stuff on here. This truck sits up high too. It's really high, it's super tall. Just wanna show you how high this is. I'm six foot two and the truck comes up to my chest. So just take that into consideration. If you're thinking about getting one of these, you probably need a ladder to work on it. So just check out all the stuff down inside there. Getting underneath the hood of the 52. It's really not that complicated. There is one catch here, pull it, that pops that. And then the second catch is right here. This was slightly modified. Um, when I bought this truck, it had a 327 in it, and the 327 started knocking. I put a 350 in it. I didn't pay hardly anything for this engine. I paid 400 bucks for it or something like that. And I bought a transmission for 250 bucks. Just saying that if you go this route, parts are very cheap. Not, I shouldn't say very, but they are cheaper than new cars. I think a new engine costs. I can guarantee you $400 would be a payment for that engine, not the whole entire purchase price. But anyway, enough talking. This was for the heater core, um, where the heater core is on the other side of this firewall. It started leaking, so I had to, I just got rid of it, bypassed it. This is a fuel filter, alternator, fan. There's really not a whole lot to talk about underneath here because everything else is underneath the floor. As you can see, there's no battery. The battery is under the floor on the passenger side. It has a nice Ooga horn. Here's the steering wheel column. It goes down inside the steering wheel rack down there. But yeah, there's no power steering. There's really no headaches. Distributors in the back. Starting the Denali, you just get in, hit the brake, and then hit the start stop button here. And the gauges do their their thing, but you can see that half the gauges are analog gauges, like the RPM gauge, I'm sorry, TAC is an analog gauge and the RPM is an analog gauge. And then you have digital gauges behind it with oil pressure, temperature, gas, and amp. And then up there in the corner, up in the right-hand corner, it says two-wheel drive. If you have it in four-wheel drive, it says it up there. And it tells you your lights are on in the left-hand corner. It also gives you a digital display of your speed, as well as how many miles are on it and what direction you're facing. All right, starting this, you just put your foot on the clutch, give the gas one pump. I'm gonna turn my lights on so you can see what this looks like. There's almost no exhaust noise whatsoever. It's all up here. It's all empty. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought those were pretty flexible. I didn't know they were yeah. light. Yeah. Well, just... got a camera right here. Yeah, I saw that. We've got a camera up there in the windshield. Nice. Yeah. Got cameras right here on the mirror when you hooked up to the trailer. Yeah.
Nice. Your truck looks like Christmas. So many lights. I have a light burned out. Here's what it sounds like. So something else worth mentioning about the old school truck. It does not beep at you if you left the lights on. If you can't tell that the lights are on, your battery will be dead the next morning. Also, when you open the door, see the door is open. When you open, have the door open, the only way to activate this light is by the button. It's a really nice bright light, shines this whole cabin up, but it does not work in unison with the door. Let's talk driving experiences, starting with the 52 Chevy one-ton truck. So when I first bought this truck, I thought I made a colossal mistake because every time that I drove it, it, it felt like I was in a bar fight. It, it really just beats the living snot out of you. Anyway, I found out that the tire pressure wasn't where the tire pressure needed to be. My tires called for 75 pounds of pressure. There was only 32 in each tire. So I put 70 pounds of pressure in each tire and it rode a whole lot better. I'm not saying it rode like a Cadillac, but it rode so much better. Moving to the Duramax. The Duramax rides just as rough as my truck does. The only difference is, is they have these sports seats in the new cars. And they're, yes, they're, they're stiff and there's not a whole lot of flexibility. Whereas with my truck, all of the suspension is in the seat. It's almost like an old motorcycle. So whenever you hit a bump, you bounce because the seat is very springy. So it's actually a whole lot better to drive than it is the new one because there is no give in the seats. Your spine feels everything. And my father-in-law always complains that his truck is just too rough. He gets his butt kicked every time that he drives that thing. I will also add this, the 52 is super easy to drive and it's very comfortable to drive now that I got the right tire pressure and it's not intimidating. The um, big Denali, it feels like you're driving a giant brick. It feels like you're driving a city block and it's just absolutely, it's too big and it's very intimidating to drive it. You hook it up to a trailer, it's even worse. Um, I got to drive it with a trailer down Florida and it, it was easy, but it's just so big. It's, it's so hard to comprehend how big it is. It's almost like driving a medium-sized school bus, really. Um, and it's just intimidating, and it rides really rough. I love all the creature comforts in the new truck, but there's just a lot of things to go wrong. Me, personally, I would, I would take my truck over my father-in-law's truck any day, even if money wasn't an issue. If somebody was to say hey would you rather have a 52 chevy truck or a brand new 2020 truck i would take the 52 all day long because parts are cheaper and i'm just wired different i guess but parts are cheaper it's easier to fix you can fix it on the side of the road i don't know if you could fix that on the side of the road if it had a computer related problem there's no computers in the chevy truck and the biggest thing that i love about my chevy is if things go south my truck will still run because it does not need a computer to operate. Anyway, I hope you guys like this episode. It's a totally outside the box episode, non-comparable comparison of two really cool trucks. Um, until next time. Oh, wait, wait, we got to do, um, we got to do name that tune. Okay. I'm looking for the correct name of the band as well as song title. First one to do both correctly will have their comment pinned to the top of the comment section. Thank you all so much for coming out and watching this. I really appreciate all the support. Please tell me what you guys thought in the comment section below. And until next time, toodaloo!